Esports and gaming hot topics, a couple of opinions, and a mute button. I'm Marissa Roberto. And I am internet sensation Brody Moore. What's up, oh. Chad? We want you guys betting as well who you think is going to be using this mute button first. Press one for me or two for little Miss Poop. Oh, that's nice. If you have no freaking clue what he's talking about, that's cool. You're new. Welcome. Me and Dummy over here are going to be discussing gaming topics, clips, and memes, everything. But if one of us says something stupid, then one of us can mute that person for 30 seconds. Jesus, and while we're going through the top stories of the day, we only get two minutes on the clock. Well, then we should stop wasting time and get to it. Kicking us off, Blizzard has announced when the Overwatch League will begin city-based play. So exciting. During South by Southwest, last weekend, OWL Commissioner Nate Nanzer says that teams will move to their home cities in 2020. Matches will be scheduled in tours so that teams can minimize travel time by playing several matches in one region before going home. The league will host three home games in different cities this year as a test for next year. So, Brody Moore. Marissa Even though Roberto. this has been in the talks now for OWL since its inception, I yes. know we're only in year two, of course. Do you think this will be a good thing for the league or a bad thing for the league? Uh, I think it's interesting. So I've said it a million times, and I guess yeah. I'll say it again in case there is anybody new. Uh, the OWL, while hard to watch the gameplay, is a great structure. Mm. They've done a lot of really good things. One, the first thing I always tell people to, to ever do when they get into eSports, just pick a team. Okay, we're just pick a team and now start cheering. OWL has done a great job of that by making them city-based things, right? Uh -huh. City-based teams. Now it's like, okay, I just I'm near this city. You know, if you're near Houston, just vote or cheer for the Outlaws, right? Yeah, like yeah. it just it's it works really city well. City run with it. Yeah, and so now expanding on that, much like uh, traditional sports, it's like the teams travel all the time, mm -hmm. right? So I don't see an issue with the travel. A lot of people are like, oh, players are going to be tired. I mean, athletes well, no, can do that, right? Yeah, for sure. These players are kind of making LA their base. Obviously, they're hanging out in LA now. It's all good. But when it comes to city play, I kind of I feel like feels bad for the Toronto Defiant because um, will we let them experience winter here? recently as they're not mm. actually from Toronto and it was uh, something for them to behold that's for sure I do like the fact that people in Toronto since we're in Toronto you was I will use us as an example we can come together and go to games together and cheer for a home team and they'll have the home team at their back like this is exactly what we need this is what overwatch doesn't necessarily need because they already have a great audience base mm -hmm. right now we've got people tuning in from around the world so exciting the only issue of course is the time zone thing I was so gonna say, there, there are the obviously teams on the other side of the world and so when they play on the other side of the world it's going to be an interesting um situation that is the only argument i can see against it is yeah. that the time zones are drastic in a lot of like sports leagues uh you know nfl nhl they're within absurd like you know three hour time zones right yeah, it's yeah. not that bad to go east to west you're going all the way over to china though from north america or vice versa that is that is gonna be hard Okay, time's up, Brady. Okay, time's up. We'll go on to something else. In another announcement out of Austin, LCS Commissioner Chris Greeley said that 100 Thieves is the poster child for new orgs. Greeley said that 100 Thieves has a great content and brand strategy and is one of the most successful orgs from a financial perspective. For reference, 100 Thieves has only won a single game in the past 10 matches, though. So my question for you, for a franchise a spot like that in the LCS, is it better to have good branding or is it better to be winning games? Uh, I mean, clearly like, investors uh, like like that you look good. Yeah, for sure. Like investors want you to win. Yes, but more than anything, having a good brand is money in the bank. You have people following all of your players. You have amazing brand. Like the marketing alone for this team is fantastic. You have an org owner who mm. people adore. Like you can't you can't even really buy that, can you? Like you think about franchises over the years. You think about like even professional teams. Like we hold on to a dynasty because of the dynasty, because of its winning power, because mm -hmm. of its star power. Power. These guys have star power. All we need now to do is to win. And I think that will come obviously in time. This is still a brand new org, but we're all just looking at it with like rose colored glasses. We love 100 Thieves. Okay, so what would really though, like if, if you're in the LCS and you have a team, you're making a team, would you rather that team be winning or just have no personality? Uh, people winning all the time or who, great personalities that maybe aren't as good team, as the game? Who wants a team to win that has no personality? Not me. 
Why, why would I want that at all? I'd rather cheer for the guys that lose. Both? I would rather cheer for the guys that lose and have heart behind it and players that I love, an, an org that I love, and cheer for them. They can be underdogs so forever, and I'll still cheer for them. Should we, should we just get rid of all the good players? in the LCS and no. replace them with great personalities so the game plays lower, uh, but at oh, least it's really entertaining okay. to watch? First of all, <laughs> ¿por qué no los dos? Why can't we not have winners who also have great personalities? If you want to achieve anything in the esports scene, especially because it's so new, it's so fresh, to people from the outside looking in, you gotta have personality, you gotta have that swag, you gotta have something for people to hold on to, to want you, to keep coming back for more. I'm sorry, but these guys need to have great orgs behind them, and 100 can't. Thieves is that. What if those professionals, like they're like, I just want, I don't wanna try to be out there and talk to people, I just wanna play my game, I wanna be the best I can be, I okay, wanna well, be a personality. Okay, well then I guess rip to you. You're, you don't have a personality, you have nothing then, you can't even stream. How are you going to make money? So get rid of all the good How players with no money? personalities. That's what Marissa Roberto was saying. I'm not saying get rid of all the players with no personalities. You need to have players that can play on your team. There's more than one person on the team. So get one class Fill clown. It. One class clown per Thank team. Thank you. That's exactly <laughs> why we have you. Go on. Jeez. Why am I going on? Oh, it's my turn. Um, yeah. Tempo Storm has signed five players to their brand new Apex Legends team. Tempo is one of the first teams to sign Apex Legends players to their org. The game only came out seven weeks ago, and there is no esports scene to speak of yet. So, is this too early to sign an Apex Legends player, or does Apex Legends just need an esport? Do they sense it? Is it coming? Is this making sense to you, Brody Moore? This is so. This is a difficult one because, like, first off, yes, I think it makes sense to sign people as mm. streamers, right? Mm. You, your name's out there. People are watching. You say you got 30,000 people watching a streamer, and it says your org name here. That's great. That's just all you want is exposure, and then you can sell merch through that. Now, when it comes to an esports scene, I honestly am not holding my breath on an Apex esports scene. Why? I really, well, again, Respawn, they make great games, but they've never really cared about the competitive side of things. I've talked about this before it's in like, Titanfall. They, they were pretty active, actually, on shutting down any of the competitive side. They, were, they actively ignored the competitive side of things. Okay. And I don't know why that would change here with Apex. Uh, because this is maybe their first game that they can see potential in an esports scene. And just because Titanfall could have been great. I, no, no. Why? I don't, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that's true. And clearly neither do they. They have people uh, from, obviously from the outside looking in, they have consulting people. They have people working in the esports scene. They know what's going on. It's not like they're just like looking at all this blindly. They see where the money is. They want to go there too. But they need to wait for the right game. They need to wait for a game that people are holding on to. And Apex Legends is that game. Why not now, Brody? They can change their mind. Because a lot of people, maybe, they're waiting to make Titanfall 3 and make that the eSport. No. And we won't see it in Apex. What? Maybe they think why that Battle Royales are good take all of this? for eSports. No, that's crazy. How you is know, that PUBG, crazy? Because PUBG is still a scene, you know. They're still thriving. They're still doing well. Why are you saying, why, can, why can't BRs be a are scene? Are they? When was, the la when was their last event? I, just, I haven't even heard I of it. They, NPL is happening right now. They have, a studio in, they have a studio in LA. And how many people knew that? So, the whole PUBG scene knows it. All of the Apex scene knows this. They're going to have a scene, don't worry. They've got all the backing behind it. They've got money, they've got people, they've got fans. They've got a good game. Why can't it be an eSport? I didn't say it couldn't. My money's on it not, though. Well, don't put your bet. Don't place your bets with You three. know what? More chat interaction. Press 1 if yes for Apex. Press 2 if you don't think there's going to be an eSports scene. Ugh. I don't know. We'll see. Right. We'll find out. Anyways, ESPN is hosting a college or a collegiate eSports tournament called the College eSports Championship, happily named. Mm. Players from hundreds of colleges will compete in qualifiers, all for the chance to earn some scholarships. Mm. Games played include Overwatch, Street Fighter V, Hearthstone, StarCraft II, and Heroes of the Storm. Mm. Now. That's exciting. This is interesting. Now, I, I really like the fact that there's more collegiate stuff. The question is, should they be getting prize money instead of scholarships? You know, because okay. it's like, should they decide where they put their money? Well, Brody Moore, let me introduce you to uh, oh, yeah. something Teach called... Me. Learning. <laughs> well, do you know anything about, like, the college basketball scene, the college football scene, any kind of college scene at all with, like, sports? Uh, nope. Okay, so these guys make tons of dough for their colleges, for their coaches, for their, their scenes at school, if you will, for their locker rooms, because they're stacked. Them. But nothing oh, I know that for about, them. Yeah. Nothing. They get zero dollars, and it's just the way it's always been. It's a crazy market. I think it's totally unfair to the athletes. They need to do something to change it. But I cannot see now an esports scene growing and thriving where the players are getting paid if athletes playing sports aren't getting paid. How does that work? 
Wait, so you think it's you think it's fair to the esports players right now no, I to don't not think it's get fair. paid no, because they're that's not, not what paid? I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. It sounds that like that's not what, what you're saying, saying Marissa Roberto. I'm saying it would only be fair to the athletes currently playing that are making nothing if the esport athletes coming in are coming in and also not getting paid. How can these guys coming in get paid when the other guys don't? It has to be even across the board. It has to be even. So who Brody changes Moore first? Has I obviously think the things in place right now have to change. These players need to be getting paid, but that's obviously not up to us or up to me. I would love for it to be changed, but unfortunately we can't see that happening anytime soon. So for this to be a thing, they can win a scholarship, okay, which is just like what athletes are making now, but uh, unfortunately I just don't see them making any dough for themselves. It's, well, at the it's same all time, about the program. Maybe it is better that the players just get scholarships because I feel like at that, a lot of those guys are young too when you're going into college and that, you know, before 20. Uh, you're maybe not the best oh, financially. You said, you said before 20. Yeah, like a lot of these guys, I you know, 18, said. 19, whatever. Right? I have Kay. no idea what you're okay. talking about. <laughs> but, so it's like maybe it's good that they aren't just giving the money to spend on, you know, partying and fratting it up. No, they're not. They, what? And they, they just get scholarships? Anyway, whatever. Yeah, you would spend your money on parties. That's what I'm saying. Ugh, no so money irresponsible for these guys. anymore. Listen, uh, now it's time to see what the top streamers are up to in Clip It. Our okay. first clip comes from streamer Twiddles, embarrassed by her fans' actions, and decided to let them know. Like, whether or not you want to think about it or not like that, you are representing me. So whenever I host someone and you're being an animal, <laughs> you're making me look like an animal. <laughs> so, um, if I see that again, if I ever see you go into someone's stream and acting like that again, I will ban you here and you will never be allowed to be here again. Mm, a little backstory, she hosted a friend and was a uh, mod when she noticed that one of her viewers was very toxic. So she obviously was embarrassed and decided to say something. So uh, do you think streamers should ban their fans based on how they act elsewhere? It depends. Okay. It depends if how they're acting elsewhere seems to be representative of you. If they're, you know, you find out a fan, you know their real name, and they, they're somewhere else in the world doing some dumb stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like pranking people, and it's not good pranks. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's just like, it's just a prank, bro. Those kind of pranks. And it's like, you have no responsibility there, because that person isn't doing that as a result no, of you, right? No, but this right? person is going to another street yes. and representing her. She always Th hosts That's what I'm saying. So in this case, yes. If, oh. if, if you're hosting someone, you are sending people over to someone to make their day mm. generally better. That's yeah. usually what you do when you host someone. And if people are going in there and being toxic, I've seen that with a lot of streamers out there before. Um, I can't think of a few off the top right now, but there's a few streamers that they send it over mm -hmm. and either A, egg on the people to be toxic mm -hmm. or just know they're going to be toxic and do nothing about it. I think that's not fair um, right. online because when you get a mob mentality like that going to someone else, when people are behind the computers, it's a lot easier for them to be even more toxic than they would just in general if you well, tell them to be toxic. I mean, it's just frustrating from a, that streamer standpoint. It's like if you're behaving a certain way in my chat and then you go into my friend's chat and behave completely differently or a total, can I say a-hole, um, mm -hmm. a total a-hole in that person's chat, then you're not, you're mis misrepresenting yourself. Like, why are you part of my community being behaving a certain way and then changing your tune completely? Like, which person are you? Yeah. Are you a dick? <laughs> Uh, either way, don't be, a dick. don't be a dick. That's what it comes down to. TLDR, don't be a dick. <laughs> so I agree, yeah, no, ban, ban them for sure. Yeah. And it was a good move on. Our next clip comes from Destiny, who was talking to his fans about the software he's using and showed them a little, little too much. Mm -mm. And then I can come over to this computer and I can turn the audio up or down, oops, up or down on this computer. And it's super easy. And um, there's like, yeah, and I can do like different things with it as well, right? Like on OBS, like I have control over everything. Let's say I want you to. Um, I can let you guys listen to like music on this computer and I can mute my microphone. I can have it so that on OBS, I can mute one mic and not the other. Wait, clicked on stream. Wait, what did I click on stream? <laughs> so if you didn't catch it there, uh, just a little bit. So, cause you missed it, I think the I first, the first time, time watching that. I missed the first time, but now watching it, yeah, I caught it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just uh, he accidentally pulled up a little, a little sexy minion. Can you do the, can you do the pose? Can you do the pose, the sexy minion pose? I don't, I don't pose? remember, it was like. No, yeah, yeah, out, but then like holding you. I don't yeah, have long yeah. hair to do it. I just like the suspenders, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that's what was happening. Now, I, I can't tell if that was on purpose, because, like, why do you have that open? Why is that open <laughs> well, on your desktop screen, right now? Yeah, maybe it's the screensaver. What were you doing before? No, why can't that just that's be not a screen, screensaver? That's not a screensaver. He had oh. the image open on his computer. Like, he had double-clicked that, <laughs> or right-clicked and clicked open on his computer to have that open at that moment. Maybe it makes him happy. Word of advice to streamers yeah. out there, 
Keep all of your naughty pictures on a separate computer that you use for streaming. Brody knows from experience. Yeah, I have a separate computer just for that. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to know about that. Okay, then we'll stop talking about okay. it. We're going to move on, though, to our profound thoughts, to our tweets from That's the right. pros. It's hard out there for a P, I am P, <laughs> and also COD Pro Parasite, as he laments. Mm. I don't know why I feel the need to reply to meatheads in my mentions. I just hate when ignorance is directed towards me. I consistently perform versus top teams, and it's still not enough to please my critics, lol. Tilting. Mm, yeah, Clayster Yo. replied too. I mean, Clayster obviously has things. He says, I've just started saying F it and block any amount of negativity. It's cleaned up my mentions a surprising amount. And then Parasite actually came back and said, it can't do it because I just always want to prove them wrong, man. I just can't block out people like that. Mm, feels, yeah. That's, that's hard though. It's like, I, I also, I have, Marissa, what? How many people have you blocked? I feel like your list is I, full, dude. You know what? I actually don't like blocking people. At okay, all. so you, yeah, I, don't, I actually don't like. We're blocking not going to use this mute button. No, <laughs> I, I know I agree with you today. Uh, no, I don't like blocking people only because okay, I've I've muted people, but then it's like I still see replies on mm. the things that I tweet. So now I'm curious. I want to know what they said. Like I don't even want to see the reply. So I don't even mute people anymore either. Like you've got to be a real you piece of work for drums. me to for me to block you. Like people have actually even DM me like inappropriate pictures. Too. I don't even block them. Like, I just don't, if they're not actually causing me real harm in my life, yeah. which I've been lucky enough to not have up until this point in time, I just, I don't really, I don't really block. I noticed that people block me though. Do you really? Yeah, on Instagram, because I have an app that says who blocks me. I, a lot of people block me there, there on Instagram. A, I don't get it. There was a whole thing on Twitter where people were like bragging about who was blocking them. Like they would go and try to get blocked by certain oh, accounts. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get that. Rod, Bre Rod Brezzo slasher was bringing <laughs> yeah. that Thor and blocked him yeah, again. Yeah. For those who go back and forth a lot, uh, always fun to watch the Twitter drama unfold with the blocking, especially with those two. But uh, to continue on the theme of trolling, of course, Rainbow Six Pro Fox A has had it with you people. <laughs> he says, quit sending me this stuff. Yo, that's amazing, <laughs> dude. So there is this fat, actually, I wish I had come prepared with these, but I, someone actually did this like all the RLCS casters. So the, their faces of us just morphed into a weird shape. That seems to be a trap. What is with people, though? That is a weird thing to get it. Like someone's actively sitting there with your face up on their computer yeah, yeah. late at night, morphing it into weird shapes. <laughs> I just love it especially because, uh, you know, Fox A, he is our precious Canadian stud muffin. Like, he is just a stud. He, you know, is a good looking kid. And so, for someone to go in and just like mess with his face in such a way, I think it's hilarious. Obviously, he thinks it's funny too, or else he wouldn't have tweeted it. So, mm -hmm. actually, I gotta, I gotta call him out. Uh, a guy in, in my chat, hopefully, he's here. Heat Mike, do it to her face. What? He's the one that did all of our Wait, faces. Do you want me to give you yeah, get, or we'll find a picture online. Okay. We'll get okay. something good. <laughs> all right, we're going to move on. To continue the tweets of stud pros, Italian stallion Zuma mm. had a not so studly situation on his flight. Uh -oh. Taking a leak in the airplane bathroom when the craziest turbulence of my life just happened. Let's just say I miss the toilet a lot. Mmm, yeah, you know what? I don't know how you guys walk around with those things. Carefully. <laughs> very careful. Very careful. Yeah, bro, it's it's real though when you're cuz you don't want to sit on an airplane seat like you don't that's no, I feel like those are the those are the ones where you squat if you go to the bathroom, right? Uh, hold up. They Especially have that tissue. Stuff, no, they oh, have that tissue. Right. Yeah, that's true. You wipe the seat, you put the tissue down. That's when you actually should sit. I'm a fan of the squat also. I, I'm like a hover. I like to hover um, in public washrooms, especially because you just never know. Um, but no, on the plane, you got to be careful with turbulence. Yo, Zuma, I don't like that. That's, that's a real, that's a real it makes turn it, Okay, so I'm, I, I usually take my shoes off in an airplane. And okay. now when I go to the bathroom, I'm going to be having my shoes on. Oh my on. God, put your shoes on when you go to the bathroom, idiot. Yeah, I've, well, I've learned my lesson. Well, I didn't God. learn my lesson, but I, you know I don't want to learn my lesson. Uh, garbage is on the floor. I keep forgetting I'm not supposed to swear. Sorry. All right. Continue. Okay. Enough, enough P-talk. We're going to move yeah. on into crowd control. We're going to start things off with something we can all relate to. This is from Reddit user HeckinHecker69. Great mm. name, by the way. <laughs> this is fantastic. Every single one of us uh, has bought a fresh new game and just gone back to our, our classic. Yeah. 50, well, I mean, 50 bucks is cheap for a game. Usually, I spend $90. And then I'm back. Is my Minecraft probably not your game? I can I bet you right now. I can tell uh, you what your game is. I don't get that. You buy a game, yeah, like a, a, the expensive ping pong see. table there. Okay. And then oh, you're not even was... playing it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. He bought the ping pong table. Yeah, yeah. And you go, and then you're always going back to your game. And I'm yeah. Gonna put money on 
Oh, I was going to say Stardew. But no, is your game dude, Animal Crossing? I, I love Animal Crossing <laughs> so much. Uh, no, I just got The Division. I literally just got The Division 2. Do you think I played it? No. no. I went back to freaking Tetris. I'm going back to Clash Royale. I'm going back to Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah. Yo. And then I tweeted that I'm like, yo, why am I interested in these games? Why do I always go back to these games? And then somebody replied, shout out if you're in chat, actually. Um, it's because you're a casual. <laughs> Oh, jeez. So I'm like, yes, with the perfect gift. I'm like, oh, okay. I can't even be mad because it's like kind of true. I really do fall back into these casual games just because they, they get their hooks into you. And I don't know if I would classify Tetris as a casual, but whatever. You got to be kind of skilled to land top five. I guess technically everything can be played casually. The division as well. Uh, it's not okay. really a competitive game. Yeah, I'm trying to defend you from this person, uh, okay? That's, are you we're being nice a to each other bit. today? That's Slightly, weird. This is weird. Only <laughs> one so. day we'll start the week off right. Uh, moving on, I could not get enough of that Apex anime last week and I uh, had to show you what the Golden Guardians have been up to. Uh -oh. First That's off, if you, if you want, there's more to that. If, if you want the rest of it, go to the uh, Golden Guardians YouTube uh, channel. Yeah. Secondly, that's just, um, that was so good. It was a like, shot for shot remake. Th screw 100 Thieves. Yeah. I'm talking about best branding. <laughs> that Golden Guardians got it on lock, dude. Huh? It's completely different. No, but this is, I know, but this is this content you need. <laughs> it's the content you need in your this life. Is, this I mean, is I don't know if you need it, stuff. but it's, it's nice. It's nice to have. You're not into it. No, I am. Would into you not watch it. a full like anime it. like remake like that? A full one? No, I'd watch clips like that though. I'd watch clips like that. All right, that's really funny. We need more of that stuff. Okay, I fine. love it. Anyways, gonna move on because I got a minute. I can't stop on the Halo hype. I love Halo. And trust me, no matter <laughs> what you thought of Master Chief before, you're gonna love him now. Ooh. Little baby. <gasps> that's a full size Master Chief. John oh, Moon Seven. Oh my goodness. First off, can we... Oh, she's a little scared. She's a little scared. Oh, no, she's okay. She wants no, she she's going to take a photo. You she cannot be afraid of Master Chief. Chief. You, no. Master Chief protects all that is humanity. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I'm just going to let you adore that for me. I love that so much. He told Like, the thing is, like, he's totally still in character. Like, he is. That's exactly how Master Chief Master would Chief, be. Master Chief, he's methodical. Right? Calculated and movements. Blue Team was always... They, everything was planned out. It was slow. You know, if you think about perfect. it, like, those soldiers have been through a lot. Like, you know, they were taken from their homes, and they were just born and bred to be mm -hmm. fighters. And the fact that Master Chief still has a heart, mm -hmm. the fact that he's still such a good man with a good soul, like, that means something mm -hmm. to me. Now that, yeah, I, I, I don't know who's in the suit, but, like, that, it was perfect. The height was, because Master Chief is, I think, 6'7", uh, yeah, 6'7 or 6'8 out of suit, 7'1". Seven okay. foot, seven foot in suit, and that guy looked really tall. You can't do a Master Chief cosplay if you're not mad tall. That's Brody's next goal in life. Yeah, I would Master love Chief to be Master Chief. He is all that is good with humanity. I agree, like the opposite of you. Listen, <laughs> all right, it's, we are drained from content, so we outie, let us know who you think had the better day today. Press one in chat for me, or two for Brody. We'll see you next time, but until then, hit us up on our socials at Squad Stay Unmuted.